This is Gordon from Solar Eclipse Timer, and my specialty is total solar eclipses. But I also have a great interest in understanding failures of engineering. The Titan disaster is incredibly sad but captivating, especially due to the primary figure involved, Stockton Rush. The reason for the Titan loss starts much earlier in 2016 with the design and the building of the first model of the sub. Stockton hoped it would be his working unit, but it ended up being the sub to try to prove the design. The sworn testimony by Tony Neeson, OceanGate's first director of engineering, at the Coast Guard hearings shows how Stockton created risk in the entire project. I've compiled crucial excerpts and added annotations to quickly tell the early story of OceanGate. During your entire time at OceanGate, did you feel a sense of uh, urgency or being rushed to get to operations, to start operations? Was there pressure? Oh, 100%. Yeah. It's a good question. Important to break up OceanGate into three companies or three phases, really. There's OceanGate 0.0. That's pre-March of 2016. Then there's OceanGate 1.0. That's serial number one, March of 2016 to June of 2019. That's my tenure. Then there's OceanGate 2.0, and that's Dan Scoville and Phil Brooks, June of 2019 on. Boeing was mostly involved with 0.0, and I don't know a lot about that. Mark Nagley, I think, is on your list to, to talk to. Mark did um, some analysis, I believe, for, uh, for Stockton. Um, so I was, I was pitched by OceanGate that the Cyclops II craft uh, was nearly complete in the sense that all the items were in, in place. They just needed somebody to take it over the finish line. And they wanted somebody with an extensive marine background. Um, so in their mind's eye, I was going to put together the parts and, um, and then just start executing it. I was originally asked to, uh, to just finish this. It was going to be a year, and that's it. I wasn't asked to design a sub. This might hard to be hard to believe. When, when I hired on, I had no idea they planned on going to the Titanic. I was never told that. At, the, what, at what point were you told that? <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was about, oh, it was a couple weeks that I was working, I was talking to Joe Perry in, in his office and he had a big bottle of the Titanic in there and I thought, oh, that's a cool model. Um, you must love ships, you know, you must love wrecks. Um, I th he, he didn't even come out and tell me specifically, but just the way that he was talking, I thought, oh, these guys plan on going on the Titanic. I had no idea. I know that sounds weird. Like, why would you take a job where you don't know what that vision is? But no, I wasn't told. That's where we're going. I was, I was told, hey, here's, here's this carbon fiber idea in a submersible, and we want you to go finish it and put it together. Mm -hmm. Sure, I need something to do for a year. It was hard to catch up to them. It was obvious that I was, I was coming into what I felt was like a club. And that's kind of hard being an outsider. All these folks had worked so long. And so it, it, um, I was searching for how am I going to establish my, my legs here? And, what, what am I going to do? So, the, I mean, the first week was good. It was the sec It was at l quite literally the second week where I started wondering, like, how am I going to, how am I going to be here? How am I going to exist? Um, so it was, it was a challenge from about week two on. And who would make the majority of the engineering decisions? It was Stockton, for sure. And so, my job as the director of engineering is more about rounding up the cattle than it is about making all the choices. If I could control it, or if I did control it, it was a significant problem or a significant issue, which maybe we'll talk about. That's how 18 strain gauges got on the hull. I wasn't gonna settle for, for anything else. So an engineering decision like that, I made it. And Stockton and I argued about it a lot. That was Brian Spencer. I could raise the alarms all I want. But it's Brian Spencer, and I look at Stockton, and you know, he'd say, this, this is what we got. This is what we're going with. The mandrel was already done, and Stockton wanted to, to go with that. So 
this is just a couple of examples of how I could influence it in some things that, if it mattered enough, then I'd fight for it. And if it didn't matter enough, I'd find a way I can mitigate it. Yeah, Stockton, I don't, I'm struggling to find the professional words to be able to put it. I'm an old Navy diver, right? There's a bunch of words I could use, but. Um, Stockton would fight for, he would fight for what he wanted. And what he wanted, even if it changed from day to day, right? Like he, he would fight for what he wanted and he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't give an inch much at all. So the fights that I had with Stockton, most of it behind closed doors, because as the director of engineering, let's keep continuity in the crew. And they can't really know that the two people on top are in solid disagreement. Um, most people would just eventually back down from Stockton. Like it, it was almost death by a thousand cuts. So I think the target requirement, um, if I remember right, was 4,000 meters, right? And we imploded the one third scale at 42. I believe, but we wanted the conservatism that Stockton wanted was 45. Um, so we met the target depth, the target operational depth with conservatism if Titanic was the target goal, not to put 3,300 meters on there. We made it 4,000 and then 4, 000, fought another 500 on top of that feeling like that was going to be the conservatism. Stockton was uh, okay with that. And um, so we never met the 4,500, if I remember right. So I know Stockton was, he was in a spat with, with folks from, from the class societies. I don't know them all. He was annoyed. He's, he was annoyed that, that um, they wrote letters to him and it was too expensive to class and they didn't want to be part of the project. Stockton's first um, issue was, it was time and cost, like to go through their plan. And, it, and I think he really wanted them to be part of it. But I think the, the plan that they came up with, um, if I remember right, one of, one of the days he was crying on my shoulder, um, it's gonna take too long and way, way too expensive. He said, this is ridiculous. And in his words, um, it stifles innovation. I don't think they had a path for it, okay. which, which was a little bit of probably the issue for Stockton. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that there was no effort. That there, was, there was no desire by Stockton to go do it. And, and that's, that's a, really a, a, both a personal and, and professional point of contention with me. I mean, I stopped the 2019 Titanic dive because the data, the instrumentation that I put on it wasn't good. And, and I was fired for it. And the, the, what I got from Stockton is the board said that you should have known this was happening. And they said, well, let me point you to exhibits A, B, C, and D that I've been telling you. Like, why aren't we telling the board? So I don't know that, I don't think Stockton communicated um, to the board with those things. But I mean, if I'm not sitting in the meeting, I wouldn't know. Uh, during testing or when it was there in April of, what's that gonna be, 2018? 2018. Um, I got hit by lightning. I had to drag a lot of my engineering team down there to replace all the electronics in it. And I could, I could find all the lightning traces. Um, so it took high energy for, for sure. And, the hole, what happened to the hole down there, as I bet your question is, I believe it got compromised by that event. Um, hmm. Yeah, I told Stockton and said that, that there's probably a good chance that that hole's compromised, for, for sure. And what did he say? 
It'll be okay. That showed some, something's going on in the center of the case. Something's going on in the left side of the case. You need more, more dives, and I can't, it was the maddest I've seen Stockton, for sure. So they went and conducted another dive. A guy by the name of, I think, Carl Stanley went, right? He runs the, the sub out of Roatan. Um, Joel Perry went in. And um, were those non Ocean Gate employees? Uh, Carl wasn't. Uh, Joel Perry was an employee, he was marketing. I got a picture. I said, um, I think the email was, hey, Tony, is this supposed to be there? I said, nope, that's a crack. Like, the hole's done. So I left my desk and I went to Bob Schumann. And uh, he was the CEO at the time. And I said, Titan's got a crack in it. I said, the hole's done. Um, and I spent a couple hours trying to convince people that, no, this is not salvageable. And I was on a plane, I think, the next day with a couple of other folks down to the Bahamas to go take a look at it. And we started carving it out and noticed that the crack was bigger than we thought, just by the picture. So it was, it was subsurface. There was a Titanic expedition scheduled for July of 2019, mm -hmm. correct? So at that point, as the director of engineering, was your recommendation to cancel the I expedition? Killed it. I wouldn't sign off on it. So I got terminated. Was there a hall available for the 2019 expedition? No, that was, that was Neil, Stockton, and Joel. The, the business part of that? No, I, know, I know it went on, and, and it wasn't true. We didn't have a hall. Got fired. When did you get fired? June 2019, because I wouldn't let him go to the Titanic. Allegedly, what Stockton tells me, he invited me to lunch and told me that Mike Ferlotti and one other board member told him that I should have known that the hull was compromised and it wouldn't work. And either he or I had to go, and Stockton said, it's not going to be me. Like I, I told him. I told him it's not working like, like we thought it would. Like this is, we couldn't go to the deep ocean test facility. We couldn't cycle it the way that, that we wanted to. We couldn't cycle it the way that, that Alan Green suggested that we did. We couldn't get confidence in the, in the data, the, all the data that I, that I looked at. So, and I told Stockton, I was like, something's, something's going on in there. Um, told him the hole was flexing too much. Like, every, everything that I could do to tell them, like, here are the alarms. Like, this is why we shouldn't go. Um, we're there. And when, he, when, he sat, when we sat down to, to a meeting, he wanted me to buy off on the idea of, of going to the Titanic, and I told him, no, you can't. Like, it's not clean. And, and, I, and I told him this exact phrase. I said, th this submersible, what we're doing, has never been done before, right? We don't have, we don't have classing direction on, on what good looks like. And I said, nobody knows what good looks like or what it's supposed to look like. I said, but what I do know is it shouldn't look like that. And sir, to clarify, was that conversation before or after the crack was discovered in the hole? It's before. I told him before he couldn't go. It's the reason for another dive, more dives. That was Brian Spencer in Stockton. It was five inches thick before I joined the organization, and you, and you couldn't move it. And that was, that was a hot topic of discussion with Dave Dyer and, and OceanGate. There wasn't a fatigue or cycle requirement. Stockton didn't, he didn't have one, he didn't want one. And so there was, there was no lifetime. We, we didn't have an end of life um, on that. He didn't, he didn't want one, and it's not something that, that I, I'm not sure any, anybody could write that on a, on a piece of paper. There's, there, there's, no, there's no cert backbone to, to go do that. And what was the plan for when the hole should be retired? If Stockton had a plan, I didn't know it. Um, Will uh, Conan, I think he's going to be on with you guys too, right? Um, Will wanted us to go make a testing program for it. And I said, great, let's convince Stockton to go do that. Um, and so I didn't, didn't, didn't want to do it. It's going to take, it was going to take some time. It was going to take some money to go, to go do that. 
um, Will said, well, I won't certify it. And I, now when, when, when I'm telling you this, I'm, I'm of course the go-between stock and said, I don't care. And he said, Let's make me the window. So we took the statue papers and we developed some, some dimensions and a, and a prediction. And Will said, I'll make it for you, but I'm only gonna assert it to, I think it was 1300 meters, right? 13 or 1800, I think it was 1300 meters. Uh, reduce margins. Were you involved in the decision to move from grade five to grade three? It was all Stockton. Do you know why he made that decision? Oh, grade five would have taken, it was twice as expensive and it would have taken, I think, six more months to get it. Because we, we had to get it overseas. I remember it was really hard to get grade five. He wanted me to be the pilot that runs the um, Titanic missions. And I told him I'm not getting in it. And uh, he asked me why. And I said, because the operations crew, I don't trust them. He said, well, what if I'm mission director? And I said, you still have the same operations crew. But I didn't trust Stockton either. They would take a look at where we started and when I was hired, it, nothing that I got was the truth. I was, I was held with a bag and trying to save and I couldn't quit. If you would have asked me question number three, what if there was a different crew? We didn't have, we didn't have the standards we set forth, meaning what does bad look like so that you have your come home indicator? Stockton was a constant moving target for that. What's it gonna be tomorrow? Couldn't, couldn't trust that. So no, as the director of engineering, I did not go in serial number one. The, every, everything was a, was a moving target. I mean, the, the cert path was a moving target. The, how are we gonna call it was a moving target. Like if we couldn't get there, then we just kind of reduced it and went on. I mean, from my, from my perspective personally, it's very stressful and death by a thousand cuts. And if he wanted somebody to go in it and he was truthful with it, it's why the word experimental is in, is in the waiver. Like I made him put that in there. We argued for a long time over that word, for sure. But it said you cannot do that without letting people know that it's experimental. We do not have this called, it's not asserted. But once they asked me to sign off on the idea that they're gonna put passengers and go to the Titanic and told them no. Thankfully, I got the opportunity to draw the line. I had the data to support it. But really, that's why serial number one was successful. That's that's what we were supposed to do. The design of it was, do you, can you collect the data such that you prevent a catastrophic failure and ultimately a loss of human life? And we did that with serial number one. Or one question that I have for you, sir. During your entire time at OceanGate, did you feel a sense of uh, urgency or being rushed to get to operations, to start operations? Was there pressure? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, that <clears throat> started about the summer of 20, yeah, maybe summer of 2016 when we decided not to do another one-third scale.